What would you say makes a great GM in today's NFL? Well, there's a lot of different factors that can come into play uh, because you have to assemble the roster. You have to sign players to contracts. You make all the different trades, the cuts. You really do a lot of assembling when it comes to your franchise. And today, we're going to go over Pro Football Network's list of the top 10 GMs in the league. So the best of the best who are doing it right now. Let's get straight into it. Number one, they got Howie Roseman. At number one and that's an interesting number one I can see why they have him there I think I would probably give a little pushback to it not too much though but the reason I think they got Howie Roseman at number one is just because of the way that the Eagles operate they have shown like look there I, I feel like their motto should be no excuses hashtag no excuses because Eagles show us every single year uh every single season especially in the offseason like look we're going to find a way to get the deals done. Just when you think, oh, Eagles about to run out of money, nope. Just when you think, oh, Eagles can't sign that player, nope. Just when you think, oh, Eagles ain't going to be able to keep him, wrong. They keep everybody, and then they add everybody too. So, and they keep on to every single year. You always think, oh, yeah, they're going to run out. No, they don't. They don't. And they do a phenomenal job of building their roster every single year, making sure they're competitive every single year. It's like the Eagles – it's like they want to dominate. That's what it seems like when they build their route. Like they really want to dominate. They want to make life easier for Jalen Hurts. They want their defense to be flying around, going crazy every single year. They do a phenomenal job of putting their roster together. Yeah, they add the void years and whatnot. But the Eagles are like, you know what? We'll deal with that when we, when we deal with it. But we'll deal with it. We'll take care of it. But we want to win right here, right now. So with them being at Eagle, number one, uh, I could see that. But the only pushback I would give would be probably because of who number two is, and that's Chiefs general manager, uh, Brett Veach. Now, with him being at number two, the only I, I, I would actually put him at number one because I feel – but maybe the way that they're looking at the list, they may feel like it's more so the coaching that's making the Chiefs win. Obviously, the general manager got to put the team together, but then the coaching staff – they have to put the players in best position in order to win. And obviously the Chiefs, <laughs> they do that every year because they win the Super Bowl every single year. It's theirs. So with the, uh, with, with the Chiefs being at number two, I could see why, but at the same time, I think that I would put them at number one because obviously the rosters that have been assembled have been good enough to win Super not just winning a regular season, not just win a couple of playoff games, but they've been good enough to win multiple Super Bowls. What do they got, like three of them over the past, uh, since Patrick Mahomes been playing? They got three Super Bowls, man. Three Super Bowls. Nobody right now is even close to that, man. So that's why I would put the Chiefs uh, GM at number one over Harry Roseman. Again, again, maybe they looking at coaching as the reason but that's just my personal opinion but let's get to the Baltimore Ravens because we ain't got to go too down on the list uh to see where Eric DaCosta ended up because he is at number three so ooh, that, that's some high praise right there for them Baltimore Ravens baby Eric DaCosta is sitting at number three behind him uh the Packers general manager Brian G I ain't gonna mess up his last name then number five Brad Holmes from the Lions number six Les Snead from the Rams now I think I would put him a little higher than that because uh, he, he, he was going crazy with it. Remember all them? Yeah, he was going wild with it, but it was working. He was making it happen, and then they end up getting a Super Bowl out of it. They lost one Super Bowl, and then they won the other Super Bowl, so it ended up working out. Nope. Number seven is Bengals GM Mike Brown and Duke Tobin. Really? Bengals GM? Like, Bengals? <laughs> Let's continue. Number eight is Brandon Bean. I would definitely put him higher than Bengals GM. Uh, number nine, Jason Lick from the uh, the Bucks, and then number ten, John Schneider from the Seahawks. So let's get back to Eric DaCosta. So those those are all the people that Eric DaCosta is in front of. And when you look at that list, yeah, I, I, I could see why. I would definitely put Brandon Bean from the Bills a lot higher though, and I would put Les Need higher as well. Um, but let's get back to Eric DaCosta. Him being at number three. That is very high, but then when you look at the rest of the GMs on the list, you can see why. When you look at the teams that Eric DaCosta has built um, in his short tenure as GM, he's only been the Ravens general manager since 2019. So it has only been like, what, five years, 2019, 2021, 20, 22, 23. 
Uh, and now he's going to 24. So it's been five years, and this is his sixth year. Uh, we, of course, have had some teams that have come close, some teams that should have got the job done, but they fell short for a lot of different reasons. But it really hasn't been, for the most part, because of the roster. You look at 2019. 2019 was a year where he made the, the big trade that just changed the Baltimore Ravens, changed their vibe, just changed everything, their attitude, when he traded for Marcus Peters. Um, and that was a trade where, boom, you got immediate impact from it. Immediate. Um, then Eric DaCosta has been known to usually make a trade every season uh, or make some big significant addition to the roster every season that is ends up being a difference maker for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, it's been guys like Marcus Peters. You got guys like Calais Campbell. Uh, he tried with Odell Beckham Jr., um, there's been guys like uh, you look at Derrick Henry now. He tried with Yannick and Godquay. It didn't work out the best. So, but with Eric Dacosta, he does definitely take his swings. And then, of course, he's been trying to change the entire outlook uh, at wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. And he, ever since 2019, he has slowly made some improvements like Hollywood. He was a good receiver. He did his thing. Obviously, it didn't work out because, you know, a lot of different reasons. But. Um, Eric DeCosta has been trying. He's been trying because he drafted Hollywood, and then he drafted Miles Boykin. So he usually swings twice at wide receiver when he drafts him. He drafted Rashad Bateman and drafted Tylen Wallace. Uh, he drafted Zay Flowers, uh, and then with the signings, he he initially he started off staying away from the older guys, and then he kind of went back into the previous Baltimore Ravens era when it came to that, bringing in guys like Sammy Watkins. Well, no, 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 Sammy Watkins wasn't even older, but his body was just beat up because he got hurt a lot. But he signed guys like Dez Bryant, uh, brought in guys like Deshaun Jackson. Um, but now it seems he seems to be getting away from that um, because the, most, the veterans he recently brought in were Odell Beckham Jr. Now he's pretty beat up. Um, but he can still play. Uh, and then also Nelson Aguilar. So it seems to be going a different route. But with Eric Acosta, you look at uh, back to 2019, that team, they didn't lose because of the roster. They lost because of the coaches and the players. Uh, the players, they, they came up short. The coaching staff, they did some head scratching stuff. And that was that. They had a good enough roster to win it all. They really, really did. 2020, uh, you go to 2020, you look at that uh, again, a good enough roster to win it all, but then in the playoffs, Lamar got the concussion, and that was it. 2021, the Baltimore Ravens faced injury after 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 injury. What happened? They were first place in the AFC. No, they were first place in the league for in the AFC for a while. But then Lamar got hurt, and everything fell apart. Everything. 2022, the same thing happened. They were doing their thing. Lamar got hurt. Everything fell apart. Uh, then in 2023, um, the Baltimore Ravens, of course, that was last year. Uh, they were doing their thing, and they they just killed it, man. They killed it. What were they, 13-4? and four? Top of the AFC North, top of the AFC, number one C. They had it all. Home field advantage. They were just dogging teams. And last year, in my opinion, and I think in everybody's opinion, was Eric DaCosta's best year as GM because he assembled the best Baltimore Ravens roster that he ever did. And it showed in a major way because last year, the Ravens, it may not seem like it, but the uh, Ravens got hurt a lot. So many Ravens were hurt last year. So many Ravens were injured last year. But by looking at the games, you wouldn't even know it. You wouldn't even realize. That's because they had so much high-quality depth. They had high-quality depth, Baltimore Ravens did. So that was such a, a beautiful thing to see because it got put into action. All that depth that they had on the roster last year, they needed it because so many guys missed time. So there were some guys that the Baltimore Ravens lost for the season. There were some guys that came back later on in the season. There were some guys that never even played a snap the entire season. But the Baltimore Ravens, they still got the job done. Why? Because they had the team 
They had the roster, the coaching staff during the regular season. For the most part, they did their thing. The players, they executed for the most part during the regular season. They did their thing. They put it all together. So I can see why Eric DaCosta, based off of the rosters that he's put together, for the most part, they've been pretty good. Now there could be some improvements in some areas. Certainly, I, in my opinion, I think offensive line and wide receivers were some of the biggest uh, improvements that Eric DaCosta could have made uh, over the years. But, hey. Still got an opportunity to do it. Now, th there's some stuff that can be out of his control. Like when guys are just getting hurt left and right, he can't do anything about that. Obviously, you want to try to build as much depth as you possibly can, but the injuries are uh, they're out of Eric DaCosta's control. They're out of any general manager's control. So you can't fault them for that. But what you can fault them for when it comes to injuries is how they deal with injured players or players who get hurt a lot so that's something to consider as well but Eric DaCosta being at number three uh, while it is some very very high praise um, I do think that it's it's deserved uh, it is deserved Eric DaCosta um, he again last year I, I kept saying it that last year is when he really earned my trust with Eric DaCosta I felt like the jury was still out on him 2019, obviously, that's first, his first year. Uh, 2020, it's like, oh, okay, what are you going to do? 2021, 2021, he built a really nice roster, too. He built a really, really nice roster in 2021, but everybody went out. Everybody got hurt. So he can't do nothing about that. Then 2022, the roster was solid, but 2023, yeah, that was, that was the year where he really earned my trust. I was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I know you got it, EDC. Um, so now... Uh, with the roster that the Baltimore Ravens have right now Again, they have so much core guys They got core guys on every level Obviously at the quarterback situations Lamar Jackson Their running back is Derrick Henry Their fullback uh, is Pat Ricard Wide receiver Zay Flowers Tight end Mark Andrews and Likely too uh, Offensive line Linda Flinder Oh, God, shout out to him. Um, then you go to the defensive side of the ball. Justin Matabike just signed that big deal. Uh, and then you go Roquan Smith. Then you go to the next level. Uh, you got Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens. But then you go to the next, and you got Super Duper Kyle and Marcus. So he got a lot of nice core guys in place. Now we're about to see how the guys around them, how they operate too. Because there's a lot of nice pieces around them too. So with this roster, again, I, I can't say that this roster is better than last year's roster because I don't think it is right now. Could it be? Could they perform? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see because they will be in the second year of the offense. So they'll be able to understand it more. They'll be in the first year of this new defense. So that could play a factor as well. But back to Eric DaCosta. Um Number three overall in the league because he's definitely behind Howie Roseman, I would say, and and definitely obviously, but everybody should be behind Veach because again, they just keep winning Super Bowls. That's all they do over there. They keep winning Super Bowls. Um, but him being at number three, I got no issue with it at all. Team, keep it clean. Where do y'all think Eric DaCosta should be on this list? Do you think he should be number one? I know it's gonna be somebody that say NEC needs to be number one, baby. Do you think he should be higher or do you think he should be lower? Let me know what y'all think and be honest about it. Be real about it like y'all always are. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all so much. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video. Turn notifications on so you do not miss not a single video, not a single update, and not a single list that we go over because we got a lot of lists to talk about. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all, and we out.